Hello, everybody. <clears throat> eh. I'm trying to click it. Eh. Eh. I'm trying to click the. Mm, the oh, I had. There we go. Oh, 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 wait. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Jurassic World Alive. Fixes. Jewel fixes. There we go. And so this is like the random episode where I do have to cover something random. Uh, I think in this episode, I'm going to do creatures that don't need fixing. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna look at creep I'm just basically what I'm gonna because every every episode I go over dinosaurs that need to be changed. But there are actually quite a few dinosaurs in this game that don't need changing. And I'm gonna go over them. At least this this is all my opinion though. If you think they do need to be changed, then maybe I will cover them in future, if enough people demand them to be changed. So let's uh let's take a look at them. First things first, I ain't touching these guys, the flocks. Whether it's the Compy animation, the Dodo animation, or the Prion Dactyls animation, they all serve the same purpose of being like, dominate, basically dominating their teams. And I think it's pretty obvious why I don't need to, I don't really need to cover these guys because one, they're already good. And uh, two, if I did cover them, I would have to nerf them and I don't want to just make a video dedicated to nerfing these guys. I like these guys the way they are. Except, except, well, no, you're more tolerable now. Maybe if we had something, I mean, my way of nerfing them was actually reworking the stegosaurs into being having precise armor piercing group attacks, which honestly, that's the only way to put these guys in their place is to add to rework or add creatures with better group attacks. And Ludia actually has been doing this. A lot of new creatures have group attacks and some old creatures got some group attacks. I mean, they didn't. Diplodocus and uh, Antarctica Pelta got the the most love and attention. Sure, it would have been nice if, if Stegoceratops and Monostegotops also got group attacks, but it would have been better if they made it a little better, like maybe a distraction resistance to help it out, but nah, just just a group attack. And Ovalophos... Ovalof... Dilophomo... Dil Ovalophosaurus also got a buff with that as well. So yeah, there are actually quite a few... I feel like in future, we're going to see more and more flock counters and more and more flocks. So I really don't need any reason to touch these guys. Next up is everything that uses the T-Rex animation. Now, the T-Rex is a bit of a weird, like, um, maybe a health buff. But anyway, what I'm saying is, like, T-Rex, the, the thing about the T-Rex animation, they all have the same thing. They have, like, really high damage, okay health, and then just terrible speed. Also a really good crit chance. But then I guess they're lacking in, like, resistances. Their abilities are pretty basic because they're just meant to be that big, heavy-hitting dinosaur. And while there are better models, like uh, the Allosaurus Gen 2 and uh, the Albertosaurus most recently because they have resistances and special abilities that make them stand out a little more and make them just a tad better, sacrificing a little bit of that damage for a little more customization, then, uh, of course, T-Rex here does seem pretty bad. Because it's like, it's super slow. That's its main weakness. A Rhino can come in. A Diplodocus can kill it very easily. It's just weak. So, I guess I would give it a health buff. But then it's just like, these guys actually don't need a buff. Because when you throw mods on the T-Rex, holy smokes, it's like one of the most powerful dinosaurs in the game. Why do you think everyone boosts the speed on Thodor? Because it's like, here's the thing. T-Rex already has a load of damage. And then all you gotta do is like boot, boost, put ma many boosts into speed, a little bit into health, and then just a little bit into damage, and you've already got a perfect build because speed is literally its only weakness. And you can see this with Thordor, with uh, Mortem Rex, with Indominus Rex, even even though it's like the Spinosaur animation, it counts as like the Tyrannosaur clad. So it's like they don't need a buff because they because they're like the guys who are like you put on a boost, you just crank up that speed. And this T-Rex is a monster. You, you like you crank up that speed really high. You give it okay. Let, let's just put boost his health, and then you just. This is basically the kind of stuff you would see, like a super T-Rex like that, and that is super dangerous to be dealt with. Of course, it's like they're they're already pretty balanced, you know. Against Brazil, a, a modded one like this can re just rinse a whole team, and at the same time, if you have a cunning with them, then they become not too great. They can usually get a bit, even then, they can, even before they die, they get a, they at least get one massive hit off of their enemies before they get, they get taken out. So, I'm not going to be covering T-Rexes anytime soon, especially, another thing, I changed Fear Strike, my fear version of Fear Strike, if I can just look at it here, uh, my custom abilities, I type in 
fears. Did I spell that wrong? I did. My bad. Fears, but as you can see, I made it so it like increases crit chance for like two attacks two turns, and increases damage by two attacks two turns by a small amount. I gave it a slight buff to be different from uh, a little more different. So that would mean the t my T Rex, the T Rex here could potentially deal has a 40% crit chance and can deal even more damage with all of its attacks because of like it'll just constantly rake up damage. It'll be it'll be great. So even if it is instant distracted, it'll be able to deal a little bit of damage. So I in I indirectly buffed it a tad. Kevin will now be joining us. Say hi, Kevin. Uh, he, I can't turn him to look at the camera. Say hello, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Okay, so the next one I won't be covering, uh, Wolves. Andrew Sargus, my best example. Because Wolves, they basically take what, they're basically what the Spinosaurus is and the Ramphorinkids really should be. Look, they have terrible health. Yes. And they have decent speed. And they have good damage. Their stats, like, like for start, like, the, like, if I just compare right away, like, to compare. Let's find, can I click? Can I click? Eh, can I click? Okay. Spin. Spino Spinosaurus. Like, like regular Spinosaurus. Here we go. So Spinosaurus has more health, less speed, way less damage, horrible crit chance, and it's just like it has no resistances. And its abilities, well, it has it has fierce impact. They both have fierce impact. But it's just that without that damage, it's a pretty fa it's a failure of a of fierce. Like, the, I've already talked about Spinosaurus in the past of why I had to buff them, boost their HP instead of their damage so that they can actually survive long enough to apply that wound and then get some damage off. It's, it's a good Dodicarus counter, but it's not exactly a great counter. That's really all it can do, because then Dodicarus will then just, like, destroy it or something. It's, like, kind of annoying. But Andrew Sargus just does it, like, sacrificing a little bit of that health for mo way more damage a little more speed, a higher crit chance, and then just better abilities. Like, it cleanses, it, de it has the impact, and it has the damage for that impact, and it has rending takedown on top of that, and no escape, and it's immune to deceleration. I would ha be happy if it was also immune to vulnerable, but it's like, close enough, that's all good, because it, can it has two abilities that cleanses that vulnerable, so it's good. I also really like both of its hybrids. I'm, I, I think Andrew Toadon is probably the weakest of all the wolves, because, like, Amphikion's good. Majestotherium is good. Uh, and then, re most recently, Andrew Tops is really good. Andrew Therium, I really like using Andrew Therium. Both of the legendary wolves are very good. Like, very, very good. Maybe uh, Majesto Saris more than uh, the other dude. But Andrew Toadon's probably the only one I consider weak. And that's, like, a small sacrifice I'm willing to pay. Maybe, I think, like, first of all, boost its vulnerable resistance because Glyptodon is here. And also, maybe give it more armor, like the Glyptodon has, or maybe... Yeah, way more armor, look at that. And then that crit chance, it's just, like, it just takes the worst of both worlds instead of the best of them. So it's not that great. But it does have exposing counters, so I guess it does fit the role of Glass Cannon, as it, it gets... If it's slow, then it's like, it can get that counter off and then deal a massive hit. That's kind of what I did for the crocodiles. But it's like, it can't really do that when it's like, terrible HP like this. Like, maybe I would I would recommend like, keeping the speed, but just boosting up its damage. Like, maybe nerf its damage and boost up its HP. But then it would just be a crocodile that I made. That's, Andrew Toadot's basically like, it's, it's okay. I don't see many people using it though, and it really only exists to like, give Andrew Tops a purpose, because Andrew Tops right now, oh, Andrew Tops is dangerous. I faced it in the tournament, and it was a menace, let me tell you. So wolves don't need changes. They're good boys. Dodicarus, another creature I don't need to change, because they basically replace the tortoises and the ankylosaurs. Like the, like, the tortoises already replaced the ankylosaurs, and then they got nerfed, and then they added the Dodicarus, and it's basically better. It has all the armor, it has good health, has decent damage for what it's worth, especially since it's basically immune to distract. Oh no, it's not. I forgot to celebrate rampage now. But it can resist distractions, and it can basically just deal loads of damage. So yeah, this thing is already really good. It's very good for rare tournaments, let me tell you. And then we have it has its hybrid Ankylodicarus, which is even better. It also it has it has a good crit chance, has good amount of armor. It, it has the health to compensate for its loss of armor, and uh, it also has a good amount of abilities. It for some reason it has that distraction resistance. When really, does it really need it? 
I mean, all these abilities cleanse distractions, and it also has group taunting shields. So it doesn't need that distraction resistance. It's kind of irrelevant. I've talked about this endlessly in the past. But anyway, no need to change Ankylo Dicarus at all. These things are, like, really good. Really good to use in battle. Love using this guy. I actually remember using uh, Glyptodon in a, the common tournament. It was only level 15. It was a really helpful creature to have. So that just shows how useful these guys are. Dimetrodon is kind of one I'm on the fence about, because on the one hand, it is, it basically does what T, it's it basically, it's like, it's sort of like T-Rex, but it sacrifices, it like, it sacrifices its health and damage for speed and resistances. So then, I guess it's, it's, it's like Dimetrodon's already really good the way it is, so I don't really need to change it, but maybe even Dimetrodon Gen 2 and Ophiocodon, I really like those two, because they're, they're good for common tournaments. But I think it's like the higher you go, the less relevant they are. Like if we look at Secodontosaurus, if I can find it somewhere here. Because Adaphosaurus is meh. But what about Secodontosaurus? Because you got butchered since the, the raids update. Your resistances are okay, I suppose. And then oh you have really you have really good damage. Maybe a health boost? And then obviously change that to critical impact. But that's really it. That's really all I change about Second Onto Swords. It doesn't really need a whole video a whole video dedicated to fixing these uh, Dimetrodon relatives, these uh, synapsids, because they're already really good. And that also goes for these synapsids, the Gorgons here, because they're also really good. There's like what I think Dakota Nops is the only one where it's like you need a real big fix for. Because these guys absolutely like i absolutely love using arc tops in tournaments it's like one of my favorites absolutely and then uh uh what's the name gorgonops that's another oh that's an okay one to have but i prefer arc top because it's slower but it has more damage so it's like i really like to use this one a lot and there's really no need reason to fix it there's also like what else is in its line there's like parasothops and Acrocanthops. Acrocanthops maybe need a buff, perhaps a little bit one, maybe better resistances or something. That's all I do because it already has, as you can see here, it's meant to be a really powerful creature. And then we, I think we're all, we all know the power that is Parasithops. So no, no debate there. This dude's already strong. And uh, yeah, those are just, is there any other, there are probably more creatures I don't need to fix. So let me just quick take a quick look around, because I, I had only planned to talk about the, the wolves, the dodics, the rexes, and uh, the flocks, but now I'm just going to see what else doesn't need fixing. Sloths. Sloths do not need fixing. They're pretty... They're honestly really good the way they are. No changes there. Snakes. That's another one that doesn't need any changes at all, because the snakes are really powerful, especially now that they're getting a lot of buffs. Terror birds? I don't really need to change Kalenkin. Maybe Forest Rackus, but no one really uses Forest Rackus anyway. It's like a common. And all the other birds after it are also pretty decent. I like using Grylenkin a lot. Oh yeah, these dudes as well. They don't need changing. N no changes required. Okay, interesting. Interestingly, all of the uh, Gallimimus and the Gallimimus and everything else need to change, ex except Ornithomimus. If I ever do a video about these guys, I'm skipping the Ornithomimus because Ornithomimus does not need a change, not at all. You are the bane of my existence. You caused so much pain for me in the past. And the rhinos. I'm not gonna make a video on the rhinos because uh, no one uses Brontotherium. Uh, Elasmotherium is already really good. Woolly Rhino, everyone knows the power of Woolly Rhino, and both of the Rhino hybrids. Again, really good. So yeah, those are basically all the creatures that you don't that you shouldn't be expecting unless enough people demand that I actually cover them. Because I really don't see a reason in changing the, them because they're already pretty balanced. Especially now that we're at getting a lot of new unique versions of On Escape. So Woolly Rhino is becoming less and less relevant with all of these like On Escape Rampages and On Escape Wing Beat and the flocks especially causing a lot of trouble for it. So it's good to it's good to know. Anyway guys, thank you for watching this episode of Jua Fixes. And I'll see you in the next one. I'll decide which one I want to do next. See you then, bye!